Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. Um, in this video, we're going to work out an example on finding partial sums for series. This is uh, an example from lesson five in the Calculus 2 notes. And if you want to read those notes um, or download other resources, head over to the site and you'll find all these other things there. So let me zoom into the example and we can get started. So what does it say? It says find a formula for the nth partial sum of the series below. Okay, great. So let me just remind you really quickly what the partial sum of a series is. Um, we're talking here about infinite series. So here is the definition down here, again, from the lesson five notes. So the nth partial sum denoted S sub N, capital N, of the infinite series A sub N from one to infinity is literally the sum of its first N terms. So S sub N is the sum uh, from N equals one to capital N of A sub N. So it's A1 plus A2 plus all the way up to AN. Okay, time for a quick example, right? So what if the infinite series looks like uh, 1 over N, right? What would be S sub N? Well, it would, would be just the sum of the first N terms of this. So this series starts at 1, so 1, plugging in there for N, and then plug in the next N value in here, so 1 half, and then add, plug in the next value, 1 third, all the way up to the last one over capital N. And this over here down here should be a capital N. Okay, um, that's S sub N, right? Most of the time what you wanna do is you wanna find a closed form formula for S sub N. In other words, we would like to be able to say that this equals maybe something over something, I don't know, rather than leave it as a sum. Why? Because you may remember, this is also in the lesson five notes, by the way, if you wanna take a look, that uh, if the limit as n goes to infinity of s of n equals l, then that's the same as saying that the series a sub n converges to l, right? So in other words, if we can show that the sum, uh, the partial, the nth partial sum uh, tends to limit, right, l, some number, then that is literally what we mean by this particular series converging. So partial sums are really at the core of infinite series and convergence of infinite series. Um, and then clearly, if you want to find the limit as n goes to infinity of anything, it would be nice if you have a formula for it, not if it's left in some you know, version where there's a bunch of terms that are just being added, right? So it, it does pay to find some closed formula for S sub n. Okay, so we're gonna do that in this example. That is the point of this example, to help you develop that skill to find closed S sub n, closed form S sub n formulas. So I'm gonna zoom in here. Let's take a look at uh, the first one. So A, this infinite series is a really silly infinite series, right? But sometimes it's really nice to start with the silly examples first. So how do I write out the terms in the series? Well, it's just one plus one plus one plus one all the way forever. So how would I find an nth partial sum for this? Well, the way you do this is usually um, thinking back to sequences, right? Because we can think about the nth partial sums as a sequence. Um, the first partial sum would be just the quote sum of the first term, right? It's just the first term. Uh, the second partial sum is the sum of the first two terms, right? So that's two. Uh, the third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms, so that's three and so on, the fourth partial sum, sum of the first four terms, that's four. And then now we're back to sequences, right? So we're back to some of the earlier lessons in the course. We would like to try to find a pattern for this sequence so that I can therefore down here say, oh, S sub N is something. What is the pattern? And you can see now perhaps why I've started with this really simple series, because the pattern is fairly simple, right? It's just N. So whatever this number is, is exactly the same as what's on the right-hand side. So S sub N is N. So this is the answer for part A. This is the nth partial sum for this particular series. All right, great. So we started simple. Let's ratchet up the complexity a little bit. Um, let's take a look at this one. So we'll do the same thing. We'll write out the terms in the sequence. Uh, N is starting at one. So it's minus one to the first, minus one squared, minus one cubed, so on. Simplifying a little bit, this is minus one plus one, uh, and this is minus one, and then we can kind of see the alternating nature of this sequence. So we'll do the same thing. S sub one is the first term. S sub two is the sum of the first two, that's zero. S sub three is the sum of the first three, that's negative one. 
s sub 4 sum of the first four, that's 0, oops, equals 0, equals 0. All right, and so to find the pattern here, um, we're going to have to do a little bit of thinking because looking at, again, the sequence of partial sums, um, what do we notice, right? So first we have negative numbers every odd term, and then we have zero every even term. So this is a sequence that's doing different things depending on whether the index is even or odd. Um, and the numbers themselves are always the same, right? All the e odd number terms are negative one, all the uh, even number terms are zero. So that's useful information, right? So if we just start trying to come up with a, sequ uh, a formula for S of n, um, we might want to uh, have, you know, half the sequence be uh, negative one, half the sequence be zero. How do we do that, right? So one way you might want to try to do, that, to do that is to build negative one to the n into here. That's going to alternate between plus and minus one. And there are lots of zeros here, right? So plus and minus one, one way to get it to be zero is to either add or subtract one. You can play around with adding or subtracting if you make n uh, something like n plus 1 or n minus 1. Um, so what would this generate right here? So if uh, n equals 1, I would have 1 minus negative 1. So that would be 2. So that doesn't give me negative 1, right? So I want to multiply it by a negative sign. So that would then give me negative 2. And then I want to divide it by 2 because then that would then give me negative 1. So that gives me the first term. Question, does this work for the next term? Let's try it. So S2, right, negative 1 minus negative 1 squared divided by 2. So I get minus 1 minus negative 1 squared, that's 1, divided by 2, that's 0. So yes, it does work for the second term. Um, so again, this is a trickier example, like I foreshadowed earlier, right? This is, we started simple with the 1 over here, which is very quick, and now we ratcheted up the complexity. Um, and so we've now found a formula for S of n, so we're technically done with this second example. But I do want to point one thing out, right? Um, as has been the case uh, with earlier videos in this uh, course, um, with each example, I'm trying to teach you something new. With this example, what I wanted to teach you is trial and error, right? So it's not always going to be so cut and dry and clear as it was in this example, what your S of n patterns are and how to quantify those patterns to come up with a formula, right? Trial and error is always a good thing to keep in the back of your mind. Try things, right? Like we did, we started off trying this and we said, eh, it doesn't quite work, let's modify it this way. Eh, it almost works, let's modify it that way. Okay, that works. Right? So keep trial and error in the back of your mind as a really useful and totally legitimate way to find S of n formulas. Um, you know, and do other things as well. We'll talk about that as the course progresses. Okay, how about part C, right? So we want to find an S of n formula here. We'll do the same thing. We'll write out the first term. That's S1. So when n equals 1, I get 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1. So that's 1 minus 1 half. Okay, how about S sub 2? So S sub 2 is the sum of the first two terms, that one. And then notice what this series does, right? Um, now when n equals 2, it's 1 half minus 1 third. Okay, so this series basically as the terms progress, you know, whatever was here becomes the, the positive uh, uh, part of the next term. Uh, and then this numerator is one more, this denominator is one more than that one. And then the pattern is going to repeat. So S3 is going to be all of this, minus one third, plus, and then now we write over this one here, and then minus one fourth. Again, I'm, I'm doing this, you know, uh, uh, explicitly talking it over to build in some more pattern recognition for you. Sequences and series, as I'm sure you've noticed by now, is a lot about pattern recognition and really does help to develop that skill. Okay, um, so finding a formula for the nth partial sum of this uh, series. Okay, uh, uh, so of, of you know the, the SNs that we have so far. So how are we gonna do this, right? Um, one thing you might wanna do is, you know, talking about options here, right? Maybe try to simplify this. So this is one half. Okay, so this one is one half uh, plus one half minus one third, right? Because this is one half. Uh, so this is one minus one third, okay? Which is two thirds. All right, so then that that's the, you know, that's S2, right? So this is S2 here, so that is two thirds. 
So this is two-thirds plus one-third minus one-fourth. So this gives us one minus one-fourth. So that is um, uh, three-fourths. All right, so now we've done enough that we can kind of start seeing a pattern. One-half, two-thirds, three-fourths. This is actually a sequence that we um, worked on in one of the videos in lesson three. Um, so if I write over the S uh, pattern S sub n patterns. I have one half for S1. I have two thirds for S2, uh, and I have three fourths for S3. You could probably predict S4 because we can detect the pattern now, right? The numerator is the same as the index, so this should be a four, and the denominators are one more than the numerator, so this should be a five. And then just writing out the pattern that I just talked about here. If the numerator is n, then the denominator is n plus 1. Okay, so that's my S sub n formula. All right, so what I did just now is I showed you how to get this pattern by really just calculating each one of the terms in the sequence of partial sums. What if I, you know, to close out the video, give you another way to think about this particular series. Um, what if I do something different, right? I, I don't calculate. Is there a way to find the pattern? Uh, of the partial sums for this particular sequence without calculating the partial sums themselves. Because, you know, as you can see, that took a lot of time. <laughs> it's taken me all this stalling in the video so I can erase stuff. So, of course, it must have taken a lot of time to write all that stuff in the first place. Okay, so how do I do all of that without writing out, uh, doing all those calculations? Here's another thing you might notice about the sequence. Uh, here's a minus one half, here's a plus one half. Those terms cancel. So one minus one third. Here's a minus one half plus one half cancel. Minus one third plus one third cancel. So one minus a quarter, right? So you can predict S4. One, one, one. So it's going to have a one minus, minus, minus. It's going to have a minus. And then one over something. Two here is one more than one. Three is one more than two. Four is one more than three. So four, five. Aha. So this is leading us to a, quote, different version of the S of n formula, right? One more than the index, so n plus 1, um, which we found through a radically different way. We did not have to calculate. I mean, sure, we have to cancel things here. That is a version of calculation. But you can see the utility of this other way of uh, thinking about the sequence of partial sums in this case. OK, I said earlier, quote, different. You know, formula for S of n. The one that we uh, derived earlier was n over n plus 1. Um, if I go here and find a common denominator, right, I would make this n plus 1. So I would also make this n plus 1. Then I have n plus 1 minus 1 coming from here, which is these cancel n over n plus 1, right? Same one that I got earlier. So we have two algebraically equivalent representations of the S of n formula for this example, example uh, C, I think it was, yep. Um, but we got to them in radically different ways, right? So we will later learn that this particular series that we are talking about, this is, we're going to learn this in the next lesson, this is an example of a telescoping series, right? As you write out the terms, the kind of inner terms, quote unquote, right, the last portion of the previous term and the first portion of the next term, you know, intuitively speaking, those cancel as they did here, as they did here, leaving you with the first term in the series minus the last term, whatever term it is you're writing out the partials on four. OK, so that's a nice property of this particular type of series called a telescoping series. Um, and it's another way that you can, as we did here, come up with the partial sum. Thanks for watching.